Well, sorry for the busy slide, and thank you, Andrew, for wonderful uh, introduction to some of the things I'm going to be talking about. Uh, this is part of the ecosystem that I work in to bring ideas, like the ideas we're talking about today, into the real world, and I'm very grateful to them. It's a full disclosure. Um, when we're talking about uh, quantum leaps, I'm really talking about fun things that we can do with DNA. Things you might not expect you do with DNA. DNA, of course, makes up our bodies and microorganisms and so forth. I'm going to tell you about how we can use DNA for physics, for detecting uh, heavenly dark matter. How, how it makes up increasingly the manufacturing process for making matter here on Earth. How we sh can use it and must use it uh, early on for engineering safety and security how you should know yourself, why you should know yourself today, not wait 10 years for this technology to develop further. It will develop, but, but did you, how long did you put off getting your first laptop? How can you change your genetic destiny, not just change your environment and your, your diet and your exercise, actually change your genes today? The extinction, the ultimate changing of genes is actually bringing back species, and I'll give you some details about that. Can we read minds? How do we do that? We do that with nanorobots, and nanorobots can be used for cancer, and I'll show you that. And finally, DNA as uh, encoding books, as we've heard. Digital documents in general. 90, somewhere between 80 and 90 percent of the universe is thought to be dark matter, stuff that we don't detect by most detection methods. There's a wind coming at us from uh, the Milky Way. It looks like it's coming from the Cygnus constellation. These are called WIMPs for weakly interacting massive particles and uh, we'd like to detect them. We can detect them with DNA. This is a proposal. It's not uh, yet tested, but it's been published. Um, and here you have little strands of DNA hanging down like a curtain from a, from a thin sheet of gold. These gold atoms are displaced by the WIMP particles that come in, and they displace one gold nucleus, and it rips through a little bit of DNA, and that angle can be computed by the DNA sequences that are released that fall down on the ground. Um, well, not the ground, but you know. Yeah. That's heavenly dark matter. This is back down to Earth. Uh, two companies that I uh, founded, Juul and LS9, are taking uh, carbon dioxide and light and turning it into energy, chemicals, and foods. Uh, these are about 100 times more efficient than turning corn into ethanol. These are large uh, bioreactors. They're like solar panels, except they're green and they make uh, all these wonderful uh, chemicals. And Procter & Gamble, Chevron, and Exxon are, are not voting against this, they're actually voting for it, for replacing petroleum by programming uh, microorganisms. As we do this, we have to be safe and secure, uh, and I make the analogy to automobiles. Uh, you have to have standards. Uh, we've been kind of operating in kind of cowboy mode for a while, but now we've got standards. We've got a new engineering discipline called synthetic biology. When I say isolation, you know, like that, when you press that button, you're somewhat isolated from, you isolate the inside of the car from the outside. It requires work to get in. When you make a, a safety feature, you don't just assume it's going to work because you did it on paper. You actually test these things uh, with crash dummies and whatnot. And you don't just assume one system's going to work. You have seat belts, you have a good chassis, you have airbags, shoulder harnesses, so forth. You license people. Uh, uh, amateurs and professionals get licensed. And, uh, and then you don't assume that just because they passed a the licensing exam and they, and they said they would do only good things, you also do surveillance. You do radar and so forth. And then all of this you can translate, hopefully, have already into biology. We are trying to do all of these. And don't just mean scientists and engineers, just like Andrew said, this is do-it-yourself biology. It's here and now. Uh, you can get a little test kit. Um, you know, you, you can have your 10-year-olds uh, uh, study the DNA of the family and find out who their father really is and <laughs> other innocent 10-year-old activities. Uh, and this do-it-yourself biology is not in the future. These are families that have acted, have gotten their whole genome sequence, not just a few bits of DNA, but the whole thing, and have benefited from it. The Volcker uh, child was having dozens of intestinal surgeries, just getting all these sores where the, the intestinal uh, contents uh, leak out into the body. Um, and so this was not going well. 
got a genome sequence and realized it was an immune problem with his immune system, not, not his gut, completely changed the way they treated it, and within a few weeks, with a cord blood uh, transfer, he was fine, and is now gone from three-year-old disaster to eight-year-old, uh, he's going to celebrate his eighth birthday very soon. The Beery twins were misdiagnosed with cerebral palsy a few genomes later, and they are now on diet that has to do with the neurotransmitters, dopamine and serotonin. And the list goes on. These are things that you can, act, it's actionable, it's, it's highly predictive. There are things you can't do with genomes, but there are things you can't do with a blood pressure cuff, too. We should focus on the things that you can do, and that's what personal genomes uh, is about. And so we have a project that does this where we uh, change some of the ethical uh, components of this. We, we question the status quo where, where people were promised de-identification. This is something, this is the only uh, open access data source that we know of for genomes, environments, and traits for human beings. Um, and uh, people to get in, they have, people try to get in, and they have to get 100% of the exam. It's pretty easy now. It's just 20 questions. And we established personalized stem cell lines for each, everybody in the project. Um, uh, it's growing. There are thousands now. This is uh, some of them that show up for the annual meeting. Uh, we have seven billion to go. Uh, <laughs> Got to start somewhere. Uh, but genetics is not our destiny. You know you can change your environments. Two people with the same genes can, like identical twins, can have very different outcomes. But more importantly, you can now change your genetic destiny. So there are individuals, very rare individuals, who are born with protective alleles. For example, there are people who lived 122 years old who drank, smoked, and ate gigantic amounts of uh, sweets and chocolate until they were 119 years old. I'm thinking of Jean Clement. Uh, that in spite of their environment, they had protective genes. That's, that's our hypothesis, and we're sequencing many older people. There were some individuals in the world that were resistant to HIV because they had a double deletion of the gene that encodes the receptor for HIV. This has now made it uh, uh, the first patient that, that got uh, a transplant of this sort is now uh, five years on and, is, and was cured of both leukemia and AIDS by this stem cell transplant and is uh, still drug-free and so forth. And it's now in phase two clinical trials, so you can just take the, the cells out of your body if you uh, have HIV, AIDS, reprogram them so that, that, that when they develop new stem cells, T, T cells, uh, they will be resistant to this horrible virus. Well, that's great for the individual. Um, what about whole species? species? Many of them have been killed by us. The passenger pigeon was killed in about 10 years. Uh, in the 1800s by uh, human beings. Um, bison were almost completely killed off, down to a, a hundreds or so, um, and they're recovering. So how do, you, how do we do this for just things that are just in the museum, and why? So it turns out that, that some environments have been changed by uh, us uh, humans uh, eliminating uh, megafauna like, like uh, mammoths. And we, if we return the mammoths, we might be able to return the, the icy uh, tundra back to a, a rich grassland that it once was. Um, we often think of our ancestors and relatives of our ancestors, like Neanderthal, as being uh, less intelligent, but they had larger brains here at 1500 relative to my pitiful 1300 cc's. Speaking of uh, reading of brains, and this is reading minds, these are actually slices of functional MRI slices through my brain. Fortunately, they are uh, virtual slices rather than actual ones, or else this would be a much less interesting talk. Um, and we, these are sort of things we're collecting the Personal Genome Project, collecting uh, genes, environments, traits. This requires a, a big instrument. Uh, we would like to scale it down so it can be more personal. We'd like to be able to read the activity of every neuron in your brain and use it for, for uh, understanding and curing many of these diseases on this list here, blindness, deafness, stroke, Parkinson's, chronic pain, uh, the list goes on. And here's an example of a tetraplegic woman who, for the first time in her life, can actually lift her own cup to drink from brain signals coming from her mind to uh, a robotic arm. But 
we, we want to move this even further, we'd like to miniaturize these um, bio nano devices are about a million times smaller and more efficient than electronics. They've had many, many billions of years to evolve. They're incredible um, and, and uh, are the basis of our bodies, and we're now harnessing them so that we can read and write to uh, neurons. Furthermore, here's an example of one that we've designed uh, to not, read and, not just read and write to neurons, but to cancer cells and immune cells. These ones actually have all the properties of a robot. That is to say, they will not only sense the right cell, in other words, be very specific and sense it, but then they will compute on it and then they will actuate, meaning they will move and deliver a payload here, a toxic payload uh, that's toxic specifically to the cancer cells or a uh, non-toxic load that can reprogram immune cells for specific functions. So you can see that that movie is, uh, gives you an inkling of what it's doing as it senses Law's logic and actuates like a robot, but this is much, much smaller than a cell. That kind of nine-on technology that we're using for neurons, cancer, and, and immune system, we can, uh, Andrew showed a, a, a similar picture of this, we can now take DNA sequencing, which cost $3 billion in a project that was involved in from in the mid-80s to 2004. We spent much more than $3 billion, actually. It's about $3,000 today. And if this handheld disposable device, uh, which hopefully will be available in a year or so, um, could bring it down into the $3 range. Um, no promises, but it's an uh, exciting possibility that you'll be carrying this around on your lapel and you'll be just reading off the genomes of all the flu viruses and bacteria and whatever it is in your cafe or your environment in this room and tweeting it to all your friends automatically. <laughs> um, by the way, you'll be reading all of your friends' DNA as well because that you're all depositing DNA throughout uh, the air right this moment. Um, I'm not sequencing it though. <laughs> and finally, those kind of nano devices can be used to read uh, DNA so swiftly and inexpensively as we go forward, these are all forward-looking statements, um, that we have taken the bold move of, of starting to think about not how can we encode DNA into digital computers, but how we can take digital information from computers and encode it into DNA. We're flipping everything around. Uh, as you just heard, we've encoded this book. This is the first book. Uh, it's actually a, a web-based version of this book that was encoded, the zeros and ones into ACGNT, five million bits of information. And we've made not just 20 million, that's how many that, that I offered to Steve and Colbert, but uh, 20 billion copies of this. Uh, so, uh, and this can encode any DNA. In fact, all of the disk drives in the world, um, the data in those, not just human knowledge, but all the backups and everything else can fit in the palm of your hand with this encoding. So that's it. Uh, we've talked about DNA as a fun device for doing physics, measuring heavenly dark matter, for doing uh, fuels and chemicals and food, um, the issues of biosafety and uh, security, we uh, need to be producing these uh, safety me mechanisms the same way we would for cars. Do-it-yourself biology, I join Andrew in inviting you all to participate. Change your genetic destiny if you need to and bring something back to life that's extinct and make some digital DNA documents. Thank you.